Recently, the Aviation Weather Center of the U.S. government started a new graphical user interface that provides a very nice and user-friendly method of self-briefing. Obviously, the regs say that we must become familiar with all the available information concerning a flight, so that's going to include NOTAMs and TFR, uh, and those things are not included on this site, but anything that you could need weather-wise is here, and it's a nice interface. So I just thought it'd be a good idea to take a look. Um, aviationweather.gov is a site, and I suggest you create, create an account with a login first. I have, and I'm logged in. Um, and this is the home page. When you revisit the site, it'll default to the last screen view that you had. Here's mine. It may be zoomed way out, or, you know, typically this is the kind of stuff that's more useful to us. Um, so the home page has this overview, which can be customized also with these buttons at the bottom of the page. So down here, you'll see I've got radar, flight category, SIGMET, center weather advisory, and uh, two PIREPs. So if I, for example, turned off the uh, flight category, you'd see that information disappear. And here's the legend down to the bottom. So the red airports are IFR, magenta's low IFR, and then of course you've got marginal VFR also. You can display radar if you want, or you can remove it like that. Um, so uh, at any rate, uh, that's kind of a uh, a quick overview there. And um, at the top here, you've also got uh, buttons for METARs. So if you click on the METARs, it's going to show you which airports have them. And then if you want to read one, you just click on it like that. So there's uh, Somerset. Not a great day for flying, but in a way, it's better to display this when the weather's not as good because there's more information. And now if I go back again, uh, it'll bring me back to that, what I call the home page, the overview. And same thing for TAFs now. So now you can read the Trenton TAF, for example, or any of the ones that are displayed. Uh, and back again, um, so you've got these other tools up here also uh, to take a look at. And additionally, up here under forecast, there's a couple of nice things. Prog charts, there's nothing really new there, but if you click on prog charts uh, and then, of course, click on the home area, click on surface to get the surface prog and now you can look out um, three days, four days, five, six, up to a week which is nice um, and there are not too many aviation weather forecasting tools that look out that far. Of course it's just a surface prog but it is, uh, it is some helpful information. And uh, then additionally under forecasts you've got the uh, aviation forecast discussion down at the bottom here and as soon as you click on that, you get the whole country's map. So let's say we wanted to look at uh, our area. You could just click on it and then scroll down. And here you can read the whole discussion for our area, for Philly, Northeast, uh, Trenton, Allentown, Millville, Atlantic City. Um, and if for you, for example, we're traveling down to Virginia, you might uh, click down here and then come down and read uh, the discussion for that area. So that's also a uh, useful and uh, pretty easy tool to use, I believe. Um, so we'll go back um, again to the uh, what I'm calling the home screen, which is uh, right there. And um, then we'll come over to um, tools and um, well, observation. I'm sorry. Before I go to tools, observations has some of the same information: METAR, ceiling viz, radar, and uh, and so on that uh, we've already seen. Um, but uh, this area under under here, tools, this GFA tool right there, graphical forecast analysis or for for aviation, graphical forecast for aviation um, is a is a nice tool. So if you click on that now you get uh, a bunch of different options and um, if you uh, if you look at the top here you've got TAFs, ceiling and viz, clouds, precipitation weather, thunderstorms, winds, turbulence and ice. So if we start to the left there with TAF, um, it shows the TAFs just like it showed before 
but it's got this time bar up here that you can slide and move and uh, it will display that time frame for the TAF. Uh, it's a nice feature. Now, um, for Ceiling and Viz, it gives you a more graphical picture and down below is the uh, legend which helps out. So this purple area that we're seeing here has uh, ceilings between three and five hundred feet and the lighter area between um, five and seven hundred, seven hundred to a thousand and then going on up with the uh, with the blue and again the same thing up here you can drag this timeline and see how the color changes gives you an idea what's uh, what to expect going forward uh, nice feature um, and then also here you can click and you'll change it uh, to flight category so again uh, uh, legend is down here low IFR IFR marginal VFR and uh, visibility here so and once again slot the slider and you'll see that the visibility uh, map moves <coughs> clouds uh, similar arrangement gives you the tops um, and uh, I'm not sure exactly how clear that tops thing is but it gives you the uh, overcast layer so 500 overcast 600 overcast here you can see and uh, coverage um, and the bases again with the slider at the top nice to see it uh, move hopefully move out of town and here it is you can see it's forecast to improve here a sky clear just a high cirrus layer um, just by tomorrow morning uh, precipitation and weather same thing you got your time slider at the top and the legend uh, chance of rain, likely rain, uh, and so on. And now um, thunderstorms, fortunately nothing going on, but if you move the slider, well, it actually looks like it's getting better. So that's also nice. Winds. Now with winds, it's nice because not only do you have this timeline at the top, but you also have a, uh, a level changer here. So we'll put it on surface. So there's the surface wind, basically calm here, but let's go up to 3,000 feet. And it gives you, uh, again, you come down here to your uh, legend to see the strength, and you can see the wind barbs to give you an idea of uh, what the directions are. Uh, move it up to 6,000, 9,000, and uh, you can see they, the winds pick up a little bit. We're up to, up to 20 knots at 9,000 feet. Um, and you have this same uh, level changer for the next two uh, buttons up here also for turbulence. Um, so turbulence at 9,000, basically non-existent. Um, 6,000, same thing. Again, you can come down here to your legend. And uh, yeah, if you go up to a higher altitude, you'll see some, but we're not climbing that high, at least not today. Um, icing, same thing. You see, you have your um, altitude uh, bar here to change, and um, the timeline up here. Um, so, if we were to move it to surface, there's no icing. Three thousand, no icing. Six thousand, nine. To, oh, we're starting to get some icing here. And if you click here, um, there's actually a uh, well, there's a graphical airman up there that I can't read. But uh, anyways, there there is icing when you uh, when we climb up today. So um, that kind of covers those things. You've got observations uh, also here and warnings, and there's the movement of the radar. Um, but uh, those are really pretty slick and easy way. You know, if it's true, if it's true that a picture is worth a thousand words, I think these are um, are, are really helpful. Um, and, um, let's see, uh, I guess that's it, really. There's no, just remember, no NOTAMs and no TFRs, but just about everything else that you could possibly need is here.